Right hand lands for Gilbert Burns. Oh, oh he puts him down. down. And Gilbert that is it. Dorino Burns. Oh, that is gorgeous. Gilbert Burns by submission. Now goes for the arm. He's going to finish this. Let's go to the next one. Who's next? I'm ready. Let's go. You have a fight. Give me a fight. When, when you want, I'm going to fight. Oh, I'm going to be champion here. 77 kilo. Doesn't matter. Give me one guy, I'm going to smash him. Like today. That's it, Mike. Got him. Finally, the moment all MMA fans have been waiting for. The hottest prospect in the UFC, Hamsat, Borish, Chimaev, faces the biggest challenge of his career, the number two welterweight in the world, Gilbert Dorino Burns. Despite the clear potential everyone sees in Hamsat, we have never seen him face a legitimate contender. And former title challenger Gilbert Burns will provide that validation the fans are seeking. This is potentially a number one contender fight and definitely a matchup to look forward to. So without further ado, we here at Athlete Central are here to tell you everything you need to know about it in this Ultimate Fight Breakdown. Recent fight. Let's start off with Hamza, but it won't take long. Despite having four fights in the UFC, his total fight time comes up to 12 minutes and 54 seconds. That averages just over three minutes per fight, which is absolutely insane. It's safe to say Hamzat is a finishing machine, and a versatile one at that. On his 10-0 record, there isn't a single decision with five KO TKOs and five submission wins. On his UFC debut, he stepped in on short notice against Welsh striker John Phillips at middleweight as a replacement for Dusko Todorovic. The average UFC audience didn't even know who Hamzat was at that point, but the bookmakers certainly did, pitting him as a minus 500 favorite. He proved his worth in the fight, dominating every second, with Phillips only landing one significant strikes in the six minutes of action. Anyone that didn't know of Hamzat Chemaev certainly remembered that name after that type of performance. He then broke a UFC record, having just a 10-day turnaround to beat Reese McKee, this time at his natural weight class, welterweight. That is the quickest turnaround time for victories in UFC history, and it was once again done in dominant fashion, taking the Northern Irishman down and landing 40 significant strikes and finishing the fight in three minutes without absorbing a single strike. I'm gonna be champion here, 77 kilo. Doesn't matter, give me one guy, I'm gonna smash him. He then had a step up in competition facing Gerald Murchard at middleweight. Hamsat stunned everyone by dispatching the veteran in a mere 17 seconds, viciously knocking him out with a right cross. It was confirmed, Hamsat was the real deal. The UFC then tried to match him up with Leon Edwards, but the fight fell apart three times because of both fighters battling the COVID-19 bug. Chimaev returned to the octagon at UFC 267, facing his first ranked opponent at 170 pounds, Jing Liang Li. That fight was simply phenomenal. Hamsat effortlessly picked up Lee and cradled him to the edge of the octagon, talking to Dana White in the process. He then proceeded to quote unquote, smash Lee for three minutes before securing a rear naked choke finish. I'm here in I'm Abu Dhabi. I'm gonna smash everybody. <laughs> Gilbert Burns has a way more extensive UFC career. 17 fights to be exact, but we'll only discuss the last six where he has fought at welterweight. His first two fights in the division were both on short notice, which earned him a lot of respect from Dana White. They were against Alexei Kunchenko and Gunnar Nelson. He earned impressive unanimous decision victories in both bouts, proving that he can compete at the heavier weight class even on short notice. Being tough to get a good opponent, they all turned that fight down. Give me another guy, give me another guy, I don't care, I'm gonna show up ready. He then faced a considerable step up in competition in a real passing of the torch fight against UFC legend, Damian Maya. The veteran was on a three fight win streak and was 10 and three in his last 13 fights. So it was a very legitimate challenge for Burns. He had an impressive showing, knocking Maya out in the first round and breaking into the welterweight top six. He then faced number one contender Teron Woodley, absolutely dominating T. Wood for five rounds and earning himself a title shot. That performance really showed off his impressive striking and wrestling. He is renowned for his jujitsu, but his well-roundedness shown in the biggest fight of his entire career, going five rounds with the former champ. 
Go back a year, and you're just a guy that's fighting that lightweight, winning some fights. Now you're 4-0 at welterweight and just beat one of the longest reigning welterweight champions of all time. Interesting fact, Burns actually had asthmatic bronchitis growing up, which is a condition that severely affects your breathing. He had to be taken to the hospital multiple times to get shots of adrenaline because he literally couldn't breathe. Fortunately, the condition was treated in 2009, but it is commendable that he was able to train and develop as a young fighter with such a horrible condition. His next fight was a title fight against his former teammate and the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, Kamaru Usman. He started off the fight well, even hurting Usman at one point. However, the Nigerian nightmare bounced back in amazing fashion, outworking Burns and eventually stopping him in the third round with a power jab, followed up with some ground and pound. His last fight was against Steven Thompson, where Burns was actually an underdog. Dorino ended up pinning Wonderboy to the ground and getting a decisive unanimous decision victory due to his dominant wrestling. Since Wonderboy is a fan favorite, a lot of fans were frustrated by Burns' lay and pray approach, but a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Attribute. The fighters are at different stages of their careers. Hamzat is a 27-year-old up-and-coming prospect, while Burns is a bona fide welterweight contender at 35. In terms of measurements, Chemaev is definitely the bigger man, considering half his fights have been at 185, while Burns was competing at 155 just six fights ago. Burns is 5 foot 10 inches, while Chemaev is 6'2". He also has a 4-inch reach advantage at 75 inches, compared to Burns' 71. Striking. Before jumping into the stats, we want to remind you that since all four of Chemayev's fights have been so short and so dominant, amassing only just under 13 minutes over the four fights, that the stats might be warped because Burns has 17 UFC fights to his name. When it comes to striking, Hamzat's dominant performances have given him a quite frankly, unsustainably high statistic of 8.68 significant strikes per minute. Burns is down at 3.12 which is not bad at all for a BJJ expert. In terms of accuracy, Chemayev stands at 77%, while Burns is at 46%, which isn't really amazing, yet Hamzat seems so much better because of all the vicious ground and pound that he lands on opponents while on top. In terms of defense, Burns absorbs 2.9 significant strikes per minute with a defense rate of 55%. Not too bad, one might think, but Chemayev's striking defense statistics are simply incredible. Listen to this. Throughout his four UFC fights, Hamzat has absorbed just one. Yes, you heard me right, one significant strike. That is absolutely astonishing. There have only been four strikes attempted on him and one of them has landed, giving him a 75% defense rate. In terms of power, half of Hamzat's 10 wins have come via KO, TKO, while six of Burns' 20 victories have come in that fashion. It's clear that both men possess power. Grappling. Let's get into the grappling where it's more of the same story. Chemayev has secured four takedowns throughout his 13 minutes in the octagon, while Burns averages 2.16 takedowns per 15 minutes. Burns' accuracy though is shockingly low, down at 36%. Chemayev is at 66% as he has landed four out of the six he has attempted in total. Dorino has a 50% takedown defense rate. No one has attempted to take Borish down yet, so there is no statistic available for that. In terms of submissions attempted, Burns attempted 0.6 per 15 minutes, and Chemayev has attempted a whopping five so far in his 13 minutes. When it comes to securing the submissions, Chemayev has ended five of his 10 wins by submission, having the rear naked choke and the darts choke in his arsenal. Torino has ended eight of his 20 fights via sub, understandably so, as he is a BJJ wizard. The yarn bar is definitely his go-to, but he also has a mean rear naked choke at his disposal. Prediction. This matchup is a very tough one to predict. Despite the hype around Chemayev, some people still back Burns, and that is totally understandable. But there is one major red flag surrounding Burns' rise up the welterweight rankings. Let's take a look at his opponents. Kunchenko proceeded to lose to Eliseu Zaleski, who was not even ranked, and then got cut from the UFC, losing to 8-5 Sadabusi in PFL. Yeah, that victory didn't exactly age like fine wine. 
Nelson hasn't fought since, so we'll bypass him. Damian Maya had a really bad performance against Bilal Muhammad after his loss to Burns. It is unclear whether he retired, but he has been removed from the active fighters list on the UFC website. Teron Woodley got dominated in back-to-back -back fights against Covington and Luque after his loss to Burns, and then lost to YouTuber Jake Paul twice in their boxing matches. And finally, his victory over Wonderboy was followed up by Bala Muhammad completely outshining Burns' performance, dominating Thompson bell to bell and earning 30 to 25 and 30 to 26 scorecards, while Wonderboy won the second round of the fight with Burns. All this doesn't mean that Burns is a bad fighter by any means. He beat everyone the UFC put in front of him with no controversy. It just puts the quality of his resume into doubt. Despite Hamzat's overwhelming advantage in all statistical departments, his sample size is small and Burns is one of the most well-rounded fighters in the division. It will be really interesting to see two fighters who are so well-versed in wrestling, BJJ and striking going up against each other. The size difference might play a factor. Chamayev is definitely stronger than Burns and if he imposes his wrestling, then it might be difficult for Durinho to find his way up. Although the amount of submissions he can throw up from his back might even make Hamzat hesitate to take it to the mat, something tells me that this won't be the case though. Considering the bravado and aura around Chemayev, it's unlikely he's scared of any man in the division. He truly believes he is the best. So do the bookmakers apparently, who favor Hamza in this matchup. Borders is a huge minus 350 favorite over the more proven Durinho, who they put as a plus 285 underdog. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Who would you guys put your money on? Drop your fight predictions in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe to never miss an Athlete Central video. Until next time.